Several Oregon school districts have made considerable progress in increasing graduation rates and closing the achievement gap. North Clackamas School District is one of those districts. The district's overall graduation rates have increased, and most notably, it has closed the graduation gap for Latino students. What are the policy and program changes behind this success? How are they able to implement the changes, sustain the strategies, and overcome barriers? What was the role of evidence and data in the construction and evaluation of the plan? So we're really proud of the work we have done in our school district to raise our graduation rates and close that graduation gap for our, for our students. Our graduation rate is up 18% in the last five years uh, and we have uh, eliminated uh, the graduation gap for our, our Latino Hispanic students as well as our black and African American students. I think probably the, the biggest focus that uh, is getting the results uh, in improving our graduation rates is really a laser-like focus on equity. And uh, not only does our district have uh, an equity lens and an equity policy, but it really is about looking at each student from the time that they enter our school system, whether that's in kindergarten or whether that's sometime between kindergarten and uh, their senior year of high school, and looking at who they are as an individual, affirming their identity and creating a sense of belonging uh, in our schools. It's looking at our curriculum materials uh, and um, does our curriculum match the demographics of our student body. It's looking at culturally relevant teaching practices. Uh, it's increasing the diversity of our workforce. Um, is that does our workforce match the demographics of our student body. You know, our school system, our students are about 35, 36% uh, students of color, but our staff is 95% white. And so there's a disconnect, a huge disconnect there. And we needed to do a better job of understanding the history and the stories and the experiences of our students uh, if we ever hope to achieve the expect academic expectations that we want for them. And I think that that truly has probably been one of the most important uh, decisions and actions we've taken in the last five years. North Clackamas has always had a focus on excellence that has been a part of our mission since I remember starting teaching with the district. But I have to say there's been a different type of intentionality within the last six or so years to really focus on the identity of each student and to have a consciousness about ourselves as educators. What are the barriers that are in place in front of students, either intentional or unintentional, knowing or unknowing, and how do we identify those and remove those so that our students have the opportunity to cross that finish line, which is actually their starting line, that graduation, it, so that they can really fulfill their own potential. So this inside out training and beginning equity uh, racial awareness training for all staff has been a foundation work. It gives us a common understanding of what does it mean for students of color? What does it mean for students who speak a different language than one another? How is their experience different than somebody who may be of dominant skin culture and language growing up inside of North Clackamas and understanding that both experiences are real? but children need different things based off of their different identities. So that's been one of the key foundational pieces. When we start looking at barriers for student achievement, one of the things that, um, one of the things that that creates for us is this humility, cultural humility from the leadership inside of the district to say, wow, we didn't recognize that this practice, whether it's a policy or, or any component of our educational system, this actually could be a barrier for some students and we change that. Uh, that's amazing. That's also really critical because as we look at graduation rates across North Clackamas and the lift that we've experienced, it's not because we've targeted one specific population and saying we're going to put every single resource into this one particular group of kids. We're really talking about honoring the identity of each student and through that messaging with every single one of our administrators and the expectation that that's going to translate to staff. You're going to see different places, Rex Putnam as one, and our other comprehensive high schools as well, our elementaries and our middle school. There is lift across the board. When we say we believe in each child and we're going to look at the systemic nature of our programs and how we remove barriers, that's a significant lift. Yeah, so any time that we pull student data, it's not good enough just to pull the data and look at the overall results that you're getting because we know that there are disproportionate outcomes um, based upon that data, uh, usually uh, for underserved student populations. And so any time that we uh, look at our data system, whether it's through uh, test results, graduation rates, uh, discipline outcomes, we're looking at it through uh, underserved populations. Uh, and 
And, and when uh, you do that, um, you start to see obviously outcomes that are not, uh, that, are, that are disproportionate. But I think you need to take it a step further. Uh, and you need to start looking then and you break it down by student group, who are the students then that are within that student group that aren't achieving the standard that you want to achieve. And I think that's one of the pieces that Rex Putnam uh, has done a really great job of, of looking at their students as individuals. And so saying, you know, we have X number of students that didn't graduate last, you know, that are, that are not on track to graduate. It's not a number to them. It's not 24 students or 30 students. It's, it's Joey and it's Amanda. And, it's, and then when we can identify those students by name, we can then target support intervention uh, to help those students achieve the high standards that we want for them. Uh, well, this school's closed the achievement gap for all of our students of color, but uh, for our Latino students, I think there's a couple programs that come to mind. Um, we have, um, last year we participated in affinity groups for our Latino students and that helped build a strong community. We're also the lucky recipients of a dual language immersion program. So a lot of our um, students, a lot of our Latino students that were connected to that program walk in feeling like they've got a place here at Rex Putnam High School. This is already a part of their home. Um, so our dual language immersion program is an important piece to that puzzle. We look at each individual student. We build relationships with each student. We um, recognize their strengths. We encourage them. It's not a system, it's a relationship. It's somebody telling that student, this is where you belong. You're thriving and, and you need to challenge yourself. So this is where you belong. If those conversations don't happen, those kids may not sign up for those IB courses. Our students, all of our students, know that somebody believes in them. They've had a connection or a relationship with an, an adult that says, you can do this. You're going to do this. Uh, our professional development is always focused on two things, um, equity and instruction. But the equity has to come first. And so we've done a lot of professional development to help our staff understand their own biases and to recognize the barriers um, that our students face that perhaps many of them didn't have to. And that is, um, that's heart work. My Spanish teacher, specifically Mr. Dames, has always been very supportive. He's always seen a kind of leader in me, I guess, and he's always trying to like push me to do better things. And a lot of my like science teachers also, they always compliment me or they will ask me to help other people. And I feel like they see something in me that I don't see and they like try to get me to see that through doing more work. So I want to be a doctor, but I am also thinking of maybe just following into some kind of medical research. Well, I think first of all, our district invested in the taking it up uh, training for all of the teachers um, district-wide. And I know that that was instrumental to say the least. Um, to learn the history of different cultures and different backgrounds and the racism in Oregon in particular and where that all came from and how we address that, how we interrupt it when we see acts of racism happening in our schools, uh, how we can work it into our curriculum and, and make it real for students, um, that, was, that was huge. And then as a staff, um, our site council and our administration has built much of our staff development around some of those same issues. How do we address this? How do we address the achievement gap? What kinds of um, activities can we bring into our classroom? What kinds of conversations can we have? And how do we, how do we muster up the courage to have those conversations and make students feel safe uh, to open up and be real about some of those things that affect them every single day? Uh, and to create an awareness amongst those other students who have never experienced anything like that. I just see with every, every group that comes through, the mindset is so much more um, in place that, you know, I can take a risk, I can put myself out there and, uh, you know, and again, the idea of just making the classroom safe to make mistakes, you know, 
So many of these students struggle with just the confidence to speak. And it's okay, make a mistake, you know? I try to fumble through my Spanish sometimes in class and they laugh at me and they try to teach me. Uh, so we all are in a state of learning here. So let's do it together. And, um, and I just love how far the students have come. They just see it. They, they know they can do it and they set the example for other kids.